Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and today we are going to be doing some plant chores, just hanging around. I have some neglected areas of houseplant zones that I haven't been to in quite a while. So we're gonna do a little bit of care there, but first I wanted to show you my new Hoya setup and I think that I will eventually put a grow light here maybe I might actually just move this entire setup to a different part of my house with a grow light because I don't know if I want a grow light on my kitchen counter but I mean I already have a grow light on my kitchen counter but like a really big one because I have a long grow light from mother that I was thinking of using over here so this is the new Hoya setup I've got a bunch on this shelf and there is actually one that I'm wanting to bring out of the cabinet to put in here. So I'm gonna consolidate all of these just slightly so that I can fit one more. It is my Hoya Velosa. I'm probably going to put it like right here. And it's been living in the cabinet and it's doing a lot better. I don't really like having Hoya in the cabinet long term if I don't have to. So I'm happy to move this out. I just love the way that this area has shaped up. It looks so cute and all of the pots like coordinate so well together. It looks really nice. And I have these curtains here, which I really should hem them a bit shorter. I hemmed them and <laughs> I was trying to be safe, but I really should have hemmed them to be like right here. Anyway, they sometimes touch the plants, which I don't like because I don't want them knocking off fresh leaves. But anyway, yeah, so this used to be where I had the um oh what are they called <laughs> my brain is fried right now this is where i had the clarinervium seeds and i have since moved those into the greenhouse cabinet so i can actually deconstruct all of this i just put them right here <laughs> it's not like the greatest setup because the shelf is so short but i need to actually water those because it's looking a little dry there's no drainage in here so i don't usually put a ton of water just enough to fill up the bottom and then the moss will pick it up from there. But these are looking really good. I don't have any secondary leaves yet, I don't think. Oh, this one might have a secondary leaf. But yeah, so far we just have like the first initial leaves, but these are looking really good. Even since I put them in the cabinet, they look like they got even bigger. So that's super exciting. I'm probably going to have a lot of plants here, which is gonna be great. And there's some more little ones popping up. I just watered this from my last repotting video. So we are going to go hang that up. Okay, I guess we're getting a bunch of random things done, but look at this leaf right here. Look at how beautiful and big that is. It's so amazing. It is nice and red on the back too. This is my Philodendron Splendid, which is a Melanochrysum varicosum cross. And the leaf right before this one was this big. So like that is a dramatic growth. As you can see, it's still like a light color because it's so new, but I need to water this. I'm afraid we're gonna be losing this leaf soon um, and I don't wanna lose any more. So we gotta give it some water. I forgot it in the last time that I watered plants. Okay, so my most neglected plants are in my office, but I have two that get neglected all the time and they are the Hoya that hang in my kitchen window. They actually get neglected so bad that I am going to move them somewhere else. I haven't quite figured out where, but I'm getting kind of like sad for them because I forget about them all the time and then I look up and they look horrible. This is my Hoya pubic calyx and this one doesn't look as bad as the other one. It actually is quite the trooper when it comes to <laughs> drought. Um, but it definitely could be doing so much better and yeah, I would love for this plant to just be a lot happier and getting more attention. It could definitely use some TLC. The plant that really looks neglected is my obovata and it even looks like okay on camera, but this entire stem is dead and it just, yeah, not looking good. So we're gonna cut that off really quick and then I don't know where do you guys think i should put these like i don't have very many places in my house to like hang plants besides the wall obviously but like i prefer these ones in macrame hangers and it's so big and i don't want to lose it but i am like on the verge of losing it if i keep neglecting it the way that i have it's probably also like super dusty so i'm gonna give it a little bit of a rinse
we are gonna go into my office because I've got some plants in there that really need some love that hardly ever get anything from me. I do like strategically place certain types of plants in this room for that reason, but it's just, yeah, it's pretty bad. Try to ignore the background. We've got some extra furniture in here that I'm trying to get rid of. But yeah, so I've got a ZZ in here, which is like definitely a plant that you can neglect, and I do. And it just looks pretty worse for wear, so it is time for a little bit of tender loving care. And it honestly could use, I feel like all of these plants could use like a shower because they have a lot of dust on them. So I'm gonna go get a microfiber cloth while this is watering down. This is my leaf cleaning solution that I DIY. It is just diluted lemon juice and you could use really like any citrus. I think you can also use vinegar, but I do just like a couple squirts of lemon juice and then water. I don't have a specific ratio. I just kinda <laughs> water it down. And then I have a microfiber cloth and I stick two fingers through it, stick it into here, wring it out a little bit, and then wipe down the leaf. And this keeps the dust off the leaves and it also shines them really nicely. They always look so good after you do this because it removes hard water stains. So if you ever get that on your leaves just from showering the plants or sometimes they'll get it from a nursery, like just being in there, maybe they just spray them overhead with a hose. Um, it'll leave marks and it just doesn't make the plants look very nice. So if you want to help out your plants, this is a great way to do that. Plus having clean leaves helps the plant to photosynthesize correctly um, because if they have like a layer of dust on top of them, it's sort of like sunglasses, but not in a good way. <laughs> kind of just blocks all of that goodness from getting into the leaf or let's say as much goodness from getting into the leaf. So I like to do this when I remember. For some reason, the plants in here get a lot dustier and I do not know why that is. It might be because I don't tend to them very often or this room doesn't get like a ton of use. It's supposed to be my office, but right now I'm not really <laughs> working in here. I'm kind of just working wherever the baby will let me, which is usually the couch with her on my lap. But I don't know if you can see on the cloth. Yeah, there's just some nasty dust on there. Also, if you have plants in the bathroom, those ones will get dust on them quite a bit because toilet paper. And that's something that I discovered. Um, this one has just so many leaves. I think I'm honestly just gonna throw it in the shower and like hose it down that way because it would take me honestly forever to wipe all of these leaves. Okay. Okay, we're back in the kitchen to water more plants. I actually want to pot up the succulent that's in this arrangement. My management company sent me sent me this. Sorry, I have hiccups. And there's a real succulent in it and the rest of the bouquet is sadly dying as they do, but there's a succulent in it. So I wanna pot that up and see if I can keep, keep it. <laughs> but before I do all that, I wanna talk about today's sponsor, which is Bellway. These are super fiber gummies, so fiber, in a gummy. If anybody out there struggles taking pills and supplements like I do, I know I had a really hard time when I was having to take prenatals. I switched to a gummy and it was so much better. Bellway Fiber takes care of your gut, helps maintain your weight, it reduces bloating, and has so many other great benefits like hair growth, which I am going to be <laughs> looking forward to because I am going to be entering the um, hair loss stage of postpartum very soon. <laughs> Let me show you what these look like. They are vegan, kosher, and gluten-free, and unlike other gummies, they contain zero sugar. However, it does have four grams of chicory root prebiotic fiber per serving, and to be honest, it tastes like candy, which is the best part of it all. So if you're looking for a simple way to get some fiber back in your diet, you can check out these fiber gummies by Bellway. You can use my code BECCA25 for 25% off at checkout at Bellway. They also sell them at at some Target, Sprouts, Walmart, and Publix locations, and they are FSA or HSA eligible, so that's pretty cool. All right, what should we do first? Should we repot the succulent, or should we do a little bit of watering? I'm thinking we're gonna do the succulent, so I'm just gonna deconstruct this 
very beautiful bouquet that I'm sad is gone. <laughs> it smelled really, really good because there's eucalyptus in it as well as these like mini roses. Amazing. Okay, so it was just kind of put into this little stem vase. I've seen these a lot with like wedding bouquets and stuff. And it's just a little, oh, we lost a leaf. Oh, lost another one. It's just this little stump here. So I'm probably just gonna remove anything that looks a little squirrely and then pop it in a pot. Like it really is just that simple. So I'm gonna go get a pot with some soil in it and I will be right back. Got my pot, it's sort of leaking still. I do plan on put, putting this just straight outside. I think that'll be the best place for it because you guys, it is so humid and hot. That looks so cute. And what a sweet memory. Now I have this to remember the bouquet my management sent me. Um, and congratulations for my baby. I'm gonna go put this outside. I think the only way that I can describe how it feels outside right now is soupy. It is hot. It's like you put your face over a pot of boiling soup. That's what it feels like outside. I used to say that Tucson feels like you put your face over, um, you open the oven because it's such a dry heat. This is just like wet. assembled what was the anthurium station and I'm gonna put this away I don't know what I'm gonna do with this little grow light yet but I was thinking about maybe trying to grow some baby tomatoes this winter because I'm such a tomato snob and it really is a shame that my tomatoes outside this year did terrible. So I'm thinking I might wanna set up like a vegetable growing situation just for like tomatoes. I think that's probably the only small thing that I would want to grow, but there are like dwarf versions of plants, of like garden plants. So I might see about that like in the spare room. I don't know. I don't have that much space for plant stuff anymore because this room is, you can see it's very full. <laughs> um, but I just store these things. I'm probably just gonna store this behind over here. And then this I'm going to put in the pile that needs to go out to the greenhouse because that's where I'm storing all of my seed starting things. Okay, I need to find a home for this plant in the cabinet because it's getting a new leaf and I cannot lose it. It is a one leaf wonder. I need it to do well. This is an El Congo, not El Congo. This is um, El Choco Red and it does need to be watered. I think I'll just water it real quick before I put it in there. But, oh yeah, here's the other new leaf that just never, never happened. We're trying to avoid that this time. And it does look promising. I think that it will put out this leaf. This is looking like very thick, so there is hope. I feel like this could come out of the cabinet. I just don't know where I'm gonna put it. This is a, um, what is this? It's a Syngonium Chia Pence, I think. This is a Syngonium Chia Pence. Um, I just need a spot for like small plants like this. It will eventually go on a pole, but it doesn't have any aerial roots out yet because this was a top cutting off of one that I got from somebody and it just um, started going downhill really fast, probably due to neglect from me during pregnancy. Um, but it just looks like this right now and it will look a lot cooler when it's more mature. But in the meantime, I don't know, it's currently still in spag, which if it's like other Syngonium, it's definitely ready for soil because these get the craziest roots. Okay, so I'm gonna move this one up to the top here. There we go. That cabinet is getting a little bit too full. Definitely at the top. Okay, I'm gonna water these real quick. These propagations have been such slow growers. Like this top cutting, I had such high hopes for, but I feel like it has barely rooted and this one is starting to put out a tip right here. Wait, no, not that. <laughs> this right here. <laughs> it started to do that, which I'm excited about. And actually the one that I sent to my friend, because I took three cuttings. The one that I sent to my friend is actually doing really amazing. So that makes me really happy because these two are stressing me out. I'm kind of considering moving them to soil 
even though they don't have like super developed root systems i feel like if they were in soil in the cabinet they would be fine it would stay moist enough because i feel like maybe they are just missing nutrients um, but also they are super close to those really intense grow lights and i'm thinking maybe if i lower them down a bit more in the cabinet so they're not getting such intense light that might be better for them so i'm gonna try that out this time around and see sort of what happens that is the thing with plants is it's constant experimenting and trying this and seeing what happens you know changing up the plan uh, but that's kind of what i love about growing plants i really love never knowing what's gonna happen and like even though you do something a million times it could be different the million and first time <laughs> so it's just it's fun they keep you on your toes and you never know what's gonna happen don't forget to also water yourself okay it's hot out there Okay, the last thing on the agenda for today with my neglected plant chores is this little propagation wall. I do not love the way that this looks anymore. Like, I feel like it looks so tiny on this huge wall. And this room needs to be rearranged because we are moving Daniel's office space to down here because his office is now the nursery. So we need to just do some, like, lots of rearranging in this room. And I'm thinking that I want to put like, I don't know what I want to do. I just need to rearrange. And I think in that rearranging, this wall is going to get changed. I love the idea of these propagation tubes. Like, I think they're just so pretty and cute. And they just need to go into the wall with a single nail. So it makes it really easy to install. Um, but yeah, I think that I want to do some work on this room eventually. Like, we still have not done the nursery. That is on the agenda this week because she is sort of starting to outgrow her bassinet. <laughs> so I'm thinking that she's going to be moving to her own room in the next, like, maybe two months. So yeah, we got to figure out the nursery because if you didn't know, she came early and we did not get to finish the nursery. It was actually the day, like the day before she came, we started to work on the nursery and she came at 35 weeks early. So not 35 weeks early. She came at 35 weeks, comma, early. <laughs> so with these, I just dump out the water. And since I have my, I have my planta potty in here right now. I'm not going to pick it up because it's heavy, but you can hear it rolling around. I have it on like a roller saucer thing. So I'm just going to dump out the water and then refill these. And my watering tank is empty. Can never be prepared. <laughs> Hold on. <sighs> so this is a cutting of my Cebu Blue. And probably when I repot all of the other cuttings that I took, I will take this one out and pot it with them. I mean, maybe, I don't know. It's pretty happy in here. It's not like the most beautiful, perfect cutting, but it's cute. This is a mid cut of my fiddle leaf fig. And I honestly don't know if this is gonna do anything, but it looks like it might be starting to root. It has like the white dots on it. I think that means pre-roots. The tank is a little dirty, so I'm just gonna shake this up, I guess. <laughs> clear it out whether it roots or not i really don't care it's just kind of nice to have something on the wall and yeah this definitely fills up space okay this one is gosh what is this i can't remember the names of any of my plants right now i really like to always make sure that id plant that i id plants when i show them but i think you're just gonna have to bear with me right now that i can't like, I can barely remember what happened yesterday, let alone the names of any of my plants. So, I do apologize for that, but I think it's some sort of, like, enjoy. That's what it's called. Both of us enjoy. <laughs> now, this is the top cutting of my fiddle leaf fig. And <laughs> I thought it would be just kind of fun to see what would happen. The roots look so cool. And I'll probably pot it eventually, but I might just bring it to a plant swap because... Or I don't know. I might pot it in with the original plant, but, like, I just... I don't want a fiddle leaf fig that's this small. I don't really see the point. I mean, obviously, it'll get bigger, but I'd rather just, like, have my big one. This Hoya Linearis is, like, so beyond toasted. I haven't checked on these in so long, and I don't know why I thought that this would be a good idea to put Linearis in here. It didn't do well. 
because it needs a little bit more TLC than I was giving it. But I might try to just restart these because you know what? I had some of this um, propagating in the cabinet and I just randomly, like it started rotting, right? So then, and then I just randomly like cut it and then shoved it back into the water receptacle and it did so much better. Like it, it actually ended up rooting the second time when I was just like haphazardly throwing it in the receptacle. I don't know what these, I don't know what to call it. So maybe that's just what I need to do. I just need to be a little bit more careless about my propagations and then they'll do good because I, apparently when I care too much, it likes to die on me. So we're just gonna shove this in there. Actually, it's a little dirty. I don't know if I can get that off. I don't know. This is These are the lone survivors and I don't know how long they're gonna live. So we're just gonna shove that in there. I have zero hopes for it, zero expectations. And I bet you it'll be this time that it actually does something. And the prettiest cutting of all. <laughs> this is Philodendron Brazil. I feel like with these like wall decorated, wall decoration propagation tubes, you just shouldn't have expectations that something is gonna do super well, um, or sorry, that it's gonna turn into a plant eventually. Like it's literally just decoration. And that is how I am looking at it at this point because that's all I have time for, so. I don't really like to do water propagation if I want it to like become a plant, but it is very pretty to, to like look at water propagation. So that's just how I've seen it. And I might do a lot more of this because uh, Brazils just do really well in water propagation. The roots are really cute and yeah. So that is the refresh on water on this wall. I do that probably like once a quarter. I'm, if I'm just being completely honest, I never do it. And if I did it more often, I think they'd be popping off way more. So if you are gonna do any sort of like tube wall propagation, put it in a place where you go a lot because I don't spend a lot of time in here. So the plants in here, <laughs> They get neglected and that's not new news. I've told you guys that a lot. Like, you know, the room, the plant room gets most of my attention and the kitchen because I'm in the kitchen all the time. So if you have plants that you love, put them in places that you go. All right, my friends, that is going to be the end of the video. I am so happy that I got to get a few things done. I don't know, I just find with plant chores lately, it's nice to have just little pockets where I can do like, I don't know, five or six things really quickly or even sometimes one or two, depending on the baby. <laughs> she kind of runs the roost at this point, which is totally fine. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and hanging out with me. If you liked it, give it a like. And if you're not already, make sure that you subscribe to my channel. And I will have Bellway linked down below if you wanna become a fiber girly, just be a little bit more on it with the fiber. Couldn't hurt, you know? <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye.